Hi there boys and girls. Today we're going to continue our unit on fractions. Our unit goal for um, this unit is what effects do addition, subtraction, and multiplication have on fractions? Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start lesson 7.9, fractions and properties of addition. Um, please have a, your notes and your pencil in front of you. And remember that every time you see a little guy in the corner, the little pencil guy, that you probably should be writing this information down. Okay, first let's review the properties of addition. The commutative property of addition states that when the order of two add-ins is changed, the sum stays the same. And here's an example. Here you see five pieces of pizza. Well, really five pizza pies. And then here you see there are four pizza pies. Again, here there are one, two, three, four pizza pies. And in this um, one, there are two, one, two, three, four, five. So there are five here. As you can see, five plus four is nine, and four plus five is still nine. And it does not matter which way you add, which number you add first, they're still going to equal up to nine. And that's what the commutative property of addition is. Next one is the associative property of addition. This states, that when the grouping add-ins is changed, the sum remains the same. So here you can see in the parentheses it's 5 and 8 plus 4, and then it comes back over to 5 plus, in parentheses, 8 plus 4. The numbers are still the same, the order is a little different. But of course when you add these up, they will um, equal the same. So of course you can see here 5 plus 8 is 13 plus 4 is equal to 17, then 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 5 is still equal to 17. Go ahead and take a few minutes to jot these properties down. Okay, really within a few minutes, it was a few seconds, but I hope you got those down. We're going to continue on. It says now that we review the properties of addition, let's try this. And this is where we're going to get into the nitty gritty of our lesson. Okay. The map shows four lighthouses in the Florida Keys and their, dis their distances apart in miles. The Dry Tortugas Lighthouse is the farthest west and the Alligator Reef Lighthouse is the farthest east. What is the distance from Dry Tortugas Lighthouse to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse traveling between the four lighthouses? So if you come and look at our picture, I know it's kind of hard to see, but here's the Dry Tortugas Lighthouse, and it's 70 and fifth, 70 and five tenths. And then our Key West Lighthouse here has a distance of 43 and six tenths. Okay, and then you can see that our Alligator Reef Lighthouse here has 34 and five tenths. Okay, those numbers are going to be important when I'm trying to um, figure out the distance. Okay, and then you can see in this next problem how they have it set up for you. What you're going to do here is that I would have this example, I would have a pencil out so you could write down this example. So we're going to go ahead and put our first measurement, 75 tenths here. Then we're going to go ahead and put our second measurement. Actually, just kidding, reverse that. We're going to come over here and we're going to put 34 5 tenths right there. And the reason why we're going to put 34 and 5 tenths right there is because we want to make sure the sum of the ones are together. And you can see 5 tenths and 5 tenths is going to eventually add up to 10 tenths, which equals 1. Okay, so now let's go back and take that 43 and 6 tenths and put that right here. Okay, so as I said before, we're going to want to keep these um, ones, fractions together that are going to be the closest to one. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite this problem. I know it's a little messy, but bear with me. We're going to have 17 5 tenths here. And then we're also going to have 34 5 tenths here, right? And then we cannot forget that other fraction over there and that whole number. 
So we need to bring that 43 and 6 tenths down here. So now what we're going to do is take these two numbers, 70 and 34, and we're going to go ahead and add them right here. Okay, 0 plus 4 is 4, 7 plus 3 is 10, and then don't forget about that 5 tenths. Remember what I said earlier, 5 tenths plus 5 tenths is going to equal out to 10 tenths, which is going to equal out to 1. So 104 plus 1 is 105. And we're going to put that new number right there. Okay, now remember, can't forget about this 43 tenths. 43 and 6 tenths. So we're going to go ahead, bring that down, and put that right there. Then our next step would be, to, of course, to add these whole numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down here because I have more room. So I have 105 plus 43. Right? We're going to do those whole numbers first so we don't get confused with that fraction right there. So 5 plus 3 is 8. 0 and 4 is 4. And bring down that one, 148. Now remember, we still have that 6 tenths up here. So what do you think we're going to have to do? We're going to go ahead and add that back to our whole number. So you should get 148 and 6 tenths. Okay? And it says, so the distance from the Dry Tortugas, Tortugas Lighthouse to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse traveling between the four lighthouses is, I'm going to write this down here, 148 and 6 tenths miles. Now I'll go ahead and give you a couple of seconds to finish your writing, and then we're going to move on. And you might have noticed as, as I uh, look at this that we actually did use the associative property, you can see right here, to group the add-ins that you can add mentally. So this was this part right here. Although you can't see it right now. I'm trying to circle. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get... So let's try it out. Here you're going to stop the video and you're going to try to solve this problem. After you solve it, you're going to continue on to the next screen. Okay, for this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the fractions. I see that the common denom denominator on the bottom is a 9. Let me fix that real fast. Okay. And I'm going to think to myself, which fractions can I add together to give me that whole number of 1? And by the looks of it, it looks like this fraction here, 4 ninths, and this fraction here, 5 ninths, can add together to give me 1. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my problem. 12 and 4 ninths plus 3 and 5 ninths. Put my parentheses around that. And then I cannot forget to add that other fraction right there. So I'm going to add put that right here. Okay. I'm going to switch to blocks so it can make it easier to see. So I have a whole number of 12 and a whole number of 3. I'll go ahead and add those whole numbers together first. I get 15. And then I'm going to come back over here and look at my fractions. 4 ninths plus 5 ninths. I know 4 plus 5 is 9, and the 9 on the bottom stays a 9, and 9 over 9 is 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and add 15 and 1 together, and I get 16. And now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my problem again so that I have 16 plus 1 and 2 ninths. Okay, I can't remember to forget that part over there. Okay, so I have 16 and 1, which I know is 17, and then I just add that 2 ninths onto that as well. So I have 17 and 2 ninths as my final answer. So now we're going to go ahead and try another problem. Remember to stop the video and try to solve the problem. After you solve it, continue on to the next screen. Okay, and here's the problem again. And this problem looks a little bit trickier because we have two numbers that are the same. 
right? But the same, the same rules are still going to apply. We notice that we have a common denominator of 4, right? So we're going to try and see which fractions we can add together to make that whole number. Alrighty, and I can take any of these 1 and 1 fourths that I want because I'm going to... Oh, sorry. Because it doesn't matter because they're the same. So I'm going to take those together because I know that 1 plus 3 is going to equal 4. So I know that these two fractions will be paired up together. So I'll go ahead and write this down here. 1 and 1 fourth plus 2 and 3 fourths. All right, parentheses plus 1 and 1 fourth because we don't want to forget about that number there. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my whole numbers because it's the easiest to do. So I have 1 plus 2 is 3. And then I have my fractions. 1 fourth plus 3 fourths. Of course, is equal to 4 fourths, which is equal to 1. And then I can write over here. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. And remember, I still have this 1 and 1 fourth here. So I'm going to rewrite my new problem as 4 plus 1 and 1 fourth. So now again, I'm going to look at those whole numbers. 1 plus, or 4 plus 1. Get 5. And come back for that fraction of 1 fourth. So for this one, you should have gotten 5 and 1 fourths. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and give you a second to look it over. And then we're going to continue on to our next one. Okay. Here we go. Another problem. Stop the video and try to solve the problem as before. After you solve it, continue on to the next screen. So go ahead and take a few minutes, pause the video to go ahead and jot down this problem, try to solve it, and then we'll solve it together on the next screen. Okay, this one may have looked a little bit harder because of that 12, right? 12 is a big number for a fraction. So speaking of 12, I know that 12 is going to be my common denominator. And again, I'm going to think to myself, which fraction can I, which fractions can I add together to make that number 12 over 12 so that I can make that into a whole number of 1. So I see I have a 3, an 8, and a 9. I know that 8 plus 9 is way bigger than 12, so that's obviously not going to work. So come back over here to 9 and 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. I think that works. So I'm going to go ahead and add these two numbers together. 3 twelfths plus 9 twelfths. You may have noticed too in this problem that there are no whole numbers. Well, no whole, no whole numbers to be added to make another whole number, which is different from what we've seen in the other previous problems. We just have fractions here. Okay, so I have 3 twelfths plus 9 twelfths plus, remember, don't forget this other one, 1 and 8 twelfths. I'm going to go ahead and add these two fractions together. And I get 12 over 12. Oops. Let me fix that. Of course, it's equal to 1 because 9 plus 3 is equal to 12, right? So we just added the two top numbers and we left the bottom one the same. Okay, so we have 12. Oops, just kidding, sorry. We have 1 as our whole number, right? We have that number 1. And we're going to go ahead and add this back into our original problem. So we're gonna, I'm going to move this over here. So I have 1 plus 1 and 8 
12ths. Okay, and I know one and one is two. Then I bring down my fraction and 12ths. And so for this one, you should have gotten two and eight twelfths. Now I'll go ahead and give you a second to look and see if any errors you might have made. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. And believe it or not, we are finished with the video. Please don't forget to take the quiz and make sure to write the questions from the quiz on your sheet of notes so we can be prepared to go over them tomorrow in class. Thank you, boys and girls. Have a good night.